And joining me now to talk about the documentary is producer and director Nat Katzman and George Moscone's son, Jonathan Moscone, who is featured in the film. Nice to have both of you here with us. Thank you for having us. Jonathan, over the years, a lot has been written and said about that very awful dark time in 1978 when uh, Dan White shot and killed your father along with Harvey Milk. This film covers those events really through the lens of your father's life. Why was that so important to you? Well, it, it, we know how the story ends, and the story uh, has been so usurped by the ending. And what made my dad so powerful was not just uh, his mark in history as someone who died for what he believed in, but someone who, from a childhood of no privilege whatsoever, made it, pos made it through the system and changed a lot of it and had a lasting, lasting effect, including his relationship with Harvey Milk, who was an amazing man himself and whose story hasn't been eclipsed um, because of the great movie Milk. And uh, so we needed, we needed to tell George's story. And uh, like you said, Harvey Milk, uh, an icon, was the first uh, openly gay elected official in California. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that, that his iconic status sort of overshadowed your father's legacy? I think unintentionally it did because the gay community at the time, the LGBTQ community at the time, and still does, needs heroes and needs someone to, to push their, their, uh, their identity and voice forward. And so that became a really urgent call to action. Um, but that in, unintentionally left my dad's story sort of over to the side. And uh, so a lot of friends and families really got together of my dad, led by my brother Christopher, to really to, to change that and bring my dad's story back to the center. And that he used the word hero. Harvey Milk was a hero to many, but mm -hmm. Moscone was a hero to many. He really, he really he worked was. hard to like make sure he, he was inclusive in the way he built city government in San Francisco. He was a state senator before he became mayor. Can you talk about his role as a trailblazer? What set him apart from other politicians of that era? Well, several things did him. And as you said, he had two functions in politics. He was a state senator for a long time and a mayor for just short of three years. Uh, as a senator, his role was in passing legislation, very progressive legislation and a lot of it. And that's an important part of his legacy that we San Franciscans sometimes overlook because he was the mayor. And when you see yeah. the mayor, that's an executive who runs the place. Well, as senator, he supported bilingual education. He supported California school lunch program. He o helped to overturn the state sodomy statute. He did a lot of important things. And he also did a lot of things. When one of our interns made a reference to this. She was, she was doing research on the legislation that George Moscone had a hand in passing. And she was taken by something about mattress safety. Mm -hmm. But it was an early bit of consumer protectionism. And it's just part of a long list of things that he was involved in in Sacramento during his career. But I'd also add that when he became mayor, it was like a switch was turned. And in the city, the, the halls of power in the city had previously been white men. And within months of Mayor Moscone being inaugurated, power was distributed among people of all sorts, women, minorities, gays, everything that reflected the, the diversity of the city of San Francisco. And it happened so quickly yeah. that that's what impressed me a lot. So, and, and Jonathan, where do you think that framework for your father's beliefs in inclusiveness, diversity came from? You know, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I have a very imaginative uh, mind to, to guess at what happened. He was uh, raised by a single woman, and I think he even talked about how his mother uh, really struggled very hard to make it and to be respected for the work that she did, to be paid for the work that she did. He grew up on the streets. He was a basketball player, so he knew the neighborhoods all across the city and was a great level playing field, the basketball court. And I think his father was a prison guard at San Quentin, and I think he just saw the world. And he was, like sometimes people wonder, how did Shakespeare write everything? He was a creative person who saw the world and saw that he could change it. And he had a capacity to talk to people across the aisle, across the street, and across the political spectrum, and get them to really listen to what he had to say. He had power, and he built his privilege, and he used it for good. As his son, when you watch this film, what surprised you the most? 
there was a picture of us in Hawaii that surprised all of us because we forgot that that picture existed. His voice, his voice, he had such a great voice. Mm -hmm. he, um, he loved the way he walked down the street and just sauntered with his hands in his pocket and he just talked with such a gravelly, sexy voice that I, d I don't even understand where that came from, except the 3,000 cigarettes he smoked a week. <laughs> um, so I, I just loved his swagger, mm. that I loved. I knew, I know about him, but I don't remember the swagger. So seeing the film and seeing that again mm. brought him back. And there were some interesting things in the film that I hadn't known before I watched it, many actually. And, and one of them was when former State Assembly Speaker and former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown talked about how he met George Moscone. They met when they both worked as janitors at Hastings. the UC, at UC Hastings um, College of Law. What are some other interesting tidbits that are very little known that you think the public should know about George Moscone? Well, it, it's hinted at because it wasn't a point of emphasis in the program, but I, I became fascinated by how he could be someone who crossed the aisle. And in the context of current politics, a man who had friends in the Republican Party who can make deals, mm -hmm. who got Ronald Reagan, the governor, to sign an awful lot of bills that were passed by the legislature in those years. Mm -hmm. It showed a degree of sophistication and honor, and we had some footage that isn't all in there, but right. there's a little bit from former um, Governor George Duke Majin that talks about how uh, they got together, even when they were on opposite sides of things. It's a wonderful film. He knew how to work together with people. And we want to say that Moscone, A Legacy of Change, the documentary will air uh, next Friday at 8 p.m. right here on KQED. And in the meantime, Jonathan Moscone and Nat Katzman, thanks to you both. Thank you. Thank you.